Today I'm going to talk about the JBC B Iron 210. Now, what this makes this station really unique, and this whole, in fact, B Iron range really unique, is it is a battery power station essentially. You have your standard stand, and the iron itself will recharge while it's stationary in the stands, and then you pick it up and you can start soldering with it on battery only. So there's no wires or anything to get in the way. They do this in three flavors, the uh, C210 cartridge range, the C115 cartridge range, and the C115 tweezer range. And the one I've purchased here is the uh, C210 range. I should note for this review that I have purchased this myself. There's no influence from Kaiser Tech, JBC, or anyone else. Um, this is a tool I wanted to use. I bought it from Kaiser Tech, which is why I'm showing the website here. Now, with the tool, you get the actual tool itself, a 7-inch console, um, and the actual stand it sits in, which basically is the power supply for everything. And if you look at the specifications, it's a 24-watt iron. Um, it takes 40 minutes to charge from completely dead to full, but most of the time it's not. you're not going to hit that. In fact, I find it charges very, very quickly. This is everything all set up. You can see here I've got a 2mm spoon C210 tip inside my iron. You can easily extract it using the normal JVC method, and you get a red flashing light when you actually uh, extract the tool. Pop it back in push it in fully and it starts heating as normal and we got a green light. You got some brass wool and a wipe and tap area to clean your wand and it can just go back in and then it starts recharging again. The screen you can see shows the temperature and power usage of the device. You can set the temperature on this screen, turn the tool on and off and then there's a settings menu where you can set a few more things like the hibernation delay, sleep temperature when it goes to sleep, if you want it to go to sleep, maximum temperature, and it shows you what the various indicators mean on the tool itself. There's also some counters you can look at which show you the total usage times of everything. The tablet itself is very locked down. Uh, you can't install any other apps on this. You actually shouldn't be able to add Wi-Fi to it, but I accidentally got into a menu that let me add a Wi-Fi network. Um, so you would normally update via loading the software in, I believe, via a USB or a, a memory card. And you can see the rear of it here. You've got a very heavy kind of uh, base stand, which is good. So it doesn't all move around and everything. That's secured quite well. The... Uh, base unit itself powers the tablet as well as uh, charges the unit and that's pretty much all it does there isn't much else to the actual base unit and we can see the weight here of the uh, unit it's at 38 grams and that's including the tip which is extremely light the battery in it is quite small and if we compare this to my standard uh, rather dirty right now c245 iron with an equivalent tip that's at 35 grams, so there really is nothing in it. This is my very first attempt at soldering with the iron. I'm soldering a QFP chip here, 44 pin QFP. So I'm going to do my standard putting a little bit of flux down. I'll pick up the uh, chip using my JVC pickup tool. Pop it down, not really very accurately. I'll use some tweezers to correct the position. And now for the actual soldering. Put a little bit of solder into the spoon tip. Just hold it down, make sure it doesn't slip and tag a few of the pins so that it doesn't move around. 
and I noticed here um, after a little bit of time that I was actually holding it quite far back. I'm not quite used to this kind of tip to small tip to grip ratio. Um, and I think that's partly what was holding me back for you know, making, making this a little bit harder for myself. And I know softwoods, I left a solder bridge on that side, but it was very easy to clean up using a bit of flux and tapping the uh, iron on it to uh, suck the solder back in again. And there we go, now I'm holding the iron properly and uh, I'm finding it a little bit easier to use. And I'd say this is probably on par with using the 1.9mm C245 tip that I normally use for QFPs. I'm actually very happy with this. And you can see the battery usage going down there. You wouldn't use this really for dealing with large ground planes or anything like that. This is purely for small jobs. But the second you put it back into the stand, it starts charging up again really, really quickly. So you could quite easily do a QFP or something like that, pop it back in the stand while you get ready your next board, and then start again. Um, so I think it could be useful for a production run. The one annoying thing I find about it, and this is really the only negative I have, is the fact that even when it's 100% charged and the screen is off, the light on it flashes constantly. There's nothing you can do about that. It's flashing to say that it's charging, but it's fully charged. But apart from that, I am very happy with the device and would thoroughly recommend it.